Stephen, it's a pleasure for me. You don't get to do this a whole lot, so it has to be a pleasure for you to be able to talk to me. Come on, a chance to talk to Brad so handsome? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, does it get any better than this? It doesn't. I'm peaking. I shouldn't have actually been doing this interview now. I don't have a show for another five weeks. What am I thinking? Well, at, at this point, you have to be saying, can we do this already? Yeah, I am. I'm saying, please, can we light this candle? Just please, someone just throw me into the fire. When you talked about ending the Colbert Report. When did I do that? When did well, I talk about you that? talked about it for a while, saying, you know what, at, at some point, <laughs> really? I'm, Have you listened, at some you listening point, I'm, on my phone I'm calls? Listen, I didn't talk about it publicly. I'm listening to some other people, but if you get to a point where you say, you know what, I think I'm about done with this, yeah. is it rather fortuitous that somebody says, hey, how would you like to replace David Letterman if yeah, you get to that so. point? Uh, yeah, I was, I was born under a lucky star. Uh, I had already decided to end the old show. Had a great time, didn't I? Mean, still really enjoyed it, but I thought, well, it was nearly 10 years at that point, and I thought, okay, well, that, that's enough. We'll go do something else, and I still wanted to work with everybody at the at the old show. And then I got the greatest phone call from Les Moonves saying, do you want to do this? And and uh, I, I can't believe my luck. Did you hesitate at all to say? I oh, yeah, you got to think, well, God, do I really? I mean, boy, replacing Dave Letterman is no small feat. And Who was the anchor before you? I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear he was great, though. Yeah, he was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, no, obviously, you got to think twice yeah. before, but you don't think, don't think long. And the character became cult-like. Well, that. he wanted to be. That's, he became cult-like because he really wanted to be the head of a cult. <laughs> really, more, more which than is, anything else. Which wanted, is fair. He wanted, people, he wanted to be loved so badly. He wanted people to worship him and agree with anything he said. Well, it, like most pundits. I'll take you back to your 2012 interview with Playboy magazine. Hold on, let me do this. Okay, let me go back. You, are you going back in time? Hold on. I'm there. I'm uh, there. Now right you're now, there? Okay. We're at the mansion. You said, when, because you were... <laughs> you. Me, it's half. It's uh, you only Bobby read. Benton. Did you only get Playboy for the articles? I only, get the, I only get Playboy for the articles that I'm in. There you go. This one you were in, and you said, refer, because somebody was talking about the cult. I don't mean to be pointing. You look I'm at fine. my fingers if you're fair. That thing's loaded. We are, we're just not nice to one another. Human the, beings. The only thing that keeps us going back to one another is that we're all filled with enormous self-doubt. Yes. Right. We're are, hoping to get answers from other human beings. Are you self-doubting as you go into this at all? If you do not, if you're not nervous about some new creative project you're about to do, you probably aren't putting enough energy into it. Is how I feel. Is that you have to be, have to have uh, uh, the spielkes a little bit to be able to do a good job. You know, every great effort should have a little bit of worry in front of it. But you don't want late night wars. Well, that's not. They're not related in any way. You, you can't create anything by having a war. I mean, what's more boring than war? It's I'm, not funny. I'm, I'm it doesn't thinking. sound funny to me. Yeah. Yeah. So this character comes over and you bring a bunch from the show, but it's not. Everybody the, from the show is coming over, yeah. And so it will feel the same or it will feel completely different well, because you're out of character. Will be different. The host will be different. Yeah. I mean, he had to win. He was an ultra conservative pundit who always had to win, could never be wrong. Um, I'm happy to be wrong. CBS wants you to win. Oh, that's great. That's their job. Yeah. You're not worried about that. Well, it was not my job. What's winning for you on this? The, the nice thing about what I do for a living is that you know it's working if people are laughing. It's not a mystery, you know? Success is real easy night by night then if you get oh, that it's not reaction? Easy, but you know when it happens. How about that? Fair enough. Yeah, I won't say it's an easy job. Who are the guests you want to have on the show? Pope Francis, more than anyone first, else. First one? Is he a shot at... My first it's... musical guest would be Pope Francis. <laughs> I love chanting. <laughs> September 8th, probably he's not going to be the first guy? Uh, I don't know. I don't you know. can't give, give away, away secrets. Guest list. I'm not going to give him my guest list, Brad. Cincinnati wants... Maybe my first musical guest is Pope Francis. Cincinnati's going to want... Why do I watch Stephen Colbert? So you're... you're... Cincinnati's going to say that? So, well, <laughs> there will be a few people in Cincinnati, Cincinnati that will say, say that? that. You know, they're... Really? They're walking around going, why would I watch Stephen Colbert? How much do you... <laughs> That's hostile. How much do you I know? I love you, Cincinnati. Don't say that. Is he like, is he typical? Queen City. Do you, Queen, Queen City? Yes. Que oh, Cincinnati sure. is the Queen Absolutely. City. You know a lot about the Queen City? Can I quiz you a little bit? Do it. All right. Give two, me your dirtiest. Two ways, three ways, four ways, five ways. What am I talking about? You're talking about the different ways you can get your chili. Look at you. Just pulled that one right out of my butt. Look. I have no idea. <laughs> But all and I know is, you know what I know about, you know what I know about Cincinnati? Tell me. Is that Cincinnati consumes 
two million pounds of chili a year and nearly a million pounds of shredded cheese. Now let's do some math here. That means that every bowl of chili is nearly half shredded cheese. <laughs> and I beg you, Cincinnatians? Sure. Cincinnatioids? I beg you, lay off on the cheese. All right. You gotta let the chili breathe a little bit. Not so much cheese. You have your own Ben and Jerry's flavor, yes. in Americone. Yes. Uh, but Grater's is the ice cream in Amazing. Cincinnati. Amazing. I order Grater's all the time. They do the French pot system where the bowl itself is chilled and so is the stick that goes in. And so it actually freezes from the inside and the outside. You get a much smoother churn that way. And then when they pour like the chocolate in at the last minute so you get big chunks of it. Grater's is the greaterest. It's amazing. Your knowledge is frightening. But that's been you said before. You don't get this job yeah. by not knowing something about Cincinnati. Big thing in Cincinnati right now, <laughs> Stephen. Uh, it's on the test. It, they had to do a written test this, before they would offer me the this job. This is on right now. Steve, Pete, Ro live? Pete, <laughs> Pete, Pete Rose's reinstatement. Should Pete Rose be reinstated to baseball yes. and then eventually go into the Hall of Fame? I don't know about the Hall of Fame, but he should be, they should put him back on a team. <laughs> And if this time, if he gets the same record he had before, then absolutely Hall of Fame. You, you are... got to earn it. you got to earn it, Charlie Hustle. You're walking... New haircut, too. You're... Please. Use like a product or something. Put a part in there. I beg you. As a friend. You're... A groom. <laughs> You're walking in at, at a rather significant time in, uh, in politics for your show to start. Every and four years, it gets extremely significant. There, yes. will, there will be some decent things to talk about. And it's Ohio! The greatest, the greatest thing oh. is every four years, there's a story everybody cares about and nobody dies. You and know, like the presidential campaign is great. Ohio's rather significant as John far as the Kasich. presidential rate. John Kasich, yeah. You, you big fan? I actually, I do like him. We had him on when he was between political careers. Uh -huh. And we had a lovely conversation backstage about trying to get young people to engage in the political process. And he said, I hope by watching your show, young people care about politics a little bit more. I don't know whether that worked. Yeah. But uh, I dug him. I like John Kasich. You dug John Kasich? I dug him. And you anticipate a potential guest then? I would love. Do we have Kasich coming on? I would love to. You can't tell secrets right now. No secrets at this point. Okay. Um, I'd love to have John Kasich on. Uh, you he, was, he, he is uh, going to be in the debate, I think. I think he's number 10. I think he's number 10. I think he's going to make it into the debate, first one. Speaking he's of numbers, do you know at one point you were number 69 on Maxim's top 100 list? Of sexiest women. You left out the, <laughs> the lead there. Well, you I have, a lot of sexiest you lists. You have a lot of awards. I do. I have a lot of things named after me. I have a lot of awards. Spiders? Like, spiders, treadmill in space. Diving beetles. A turtle. Truthiness got in. To Webster's. It to was. It was the Associated Press Word of the Year. What's it left, was, Stephen? What's left? CBS is what's left. The Ed Sullivan Theater. Broadway. <laughs> Does this mean anything in this town anymore? <laughs> Evie. Evie said. I think it was to. Evie. Oh, yeah. Evie. Am I loud? That's my wife's name. <laughs> you just. You said Evie? As if you know my wife? Evie. Sure, we're pretty tight. You know, what's your wife's name? Colleen. Colleen was telling me the other day. <laughs> what she said? Don't ask. <laughs> we're planning a party for you. It's all very innocent. So, yes, this Evie, is an, my uh, wife, uh, another Mrs. Secret. Colbert, I think, is the word you're looking for, Brad. <laughs> Forgive me. Mrs. Colbert once said, uh, I think. Security? <laughs> I think. Security? I think to Oprah. She, my wife said to Oprah, yes, Miss Winfrey. <laughs> This guy comes home, and I say, no, I don't want that guy. She doesn't. I want the other. She didn't no, say that. My wife does not want the character. She lying home. to Oprah? No, no. That was, cannot lie that to was, Oprah. That was truthiness. It's physically impossible. You cannot lie to Oprah. So she, she, gets you, she, she gets you in the Oprah lock. She was in truthiness then, your wife. Uh, my wife understood that my character was not me and never wanted him to come home because, as she said, I didn't marry this guy. Go outside, come back in as my husband. All right. I want to close with this. Can we get a guarantee that when you, you'll travel the show on the road? I mean, we did just renovate the Ed Sullivan Theater. It's okay, and you'll go there for a while. Again. Can you bring the show to Cincinnati? I can. It is physically possible. Will you? Will I? I want a guarantee. Do you have a guarantee that it, in an infinite universe, where t in an infinite amount of time, uh -huh. 
and my writers are 100 monkeys typing for eternity, mm -hmm. we'll definitely bring the show to Cincinnati. Stephen Colbert, thank you very much. Thank you, Brad. We'll be right back.